In this video, I'm going to break down exactly how you can put on your next 10 pounds of lean muscle tissue, all while staying lean, which does not mean dirty bulking, putting on too much body fat, or losing your muscle definition. Our client Rainer achieved exactly this and put on 15 pounds of body weight while looking just as lean as he did when he started. What you see here is a year long process. And what I'm going to do in the next 10 minutes is condense that one year long process into this video so you can walk away and do the same. The first thing you wanna do is create the demand for the calories. The only way to create a larger demand for calories is through training. And when I say training, I don't just mean going through the motions, putting together workouts on the fly, or scrolling social media between your sets. I mean the kind of training that requires you to eat in a calorie surplus in order to keep up. Raider had years upon years of experience when he started our program, yet he found himself in a perpetual plateau. He was eating enough calories and protein to get by, but there wasn't that much intention behind his training. And he was led to believe that he was getting close to his genetic ceiling as far as where he could take his physique. And of course, he wanted to gain more muscle tissue. He just didn't really know what to do and didn't have the motivation to try and do more work than he was already doing. So the very first thing that we started him with was maintenance calories along with maintenance volume in his training. The quickest way to get to the bottom of a plateau is to start at your baseline. But training that meant pulling his volume down to eight to 12 working sets per target muscle group. It means eight to 12 for chest, eight to 12 for back, eight to 12 for legs, so on and so forth. We also programmed three to five second long eccentrics with every single one of those working sets and every single one of those reps. What this did was not only teach Rainer to slow things down and control the movements better, but it also exposed weaknesses and exposed faults in his technique that we could improve to better stimulate the muscle that we were trying to train. This gave us the time to not only improve his movement pattern, but improve the quality of the work that he was putting in. Being mindful that adding a higher quantity of workload was something that was already not working for him. What Rainer quickly noticed here, and what you will also quickly notice here by doing the same things, is that you're able to get more out of doing less just by increasing the quality of work that you're doing rather than the quantity of work that you're doing. You can only get so far by trying to add more volume or add more workload to your plate. At some point, you need to slow things down, back off and see where you have areas to improve. No matter your experience level, there's probably something that you can always improve when it comes to the quality of your training. For the first time in a long time, what Rainer noticed was an increased demand from the training stimulus of simply controlling exercises better, taking movements through a full range of motion, and better activating muscle groups that he had trouble with before. This increased demand in stimulus drove his hunger up and got him encouraged to want to go into a calorie surplus, which is what we did next. The second step to gaining your next 10 pounds of lean muscle tissue is easing into the calorie surplus. You have to look at gaining muscle as a teeter-totter. As your training demands more calories, we have to bring food up to get things leveled out again. Once training starts demanding more from you, things will balance itself out until again, training demands more and you just added more calories to balance things out again. And that process repeats again and again. Over the course of just over six months, we brought Rainer's calories up 900 calories in total, which led to 15 pounds of body weight added, resulting in this transformation. So how do we get ourselves into a surplus? How do we make adjustments for the calorie surplus over the course of six months or more? A good rule of thumb is to increase calories just 10 to 15% at a time when it comes to moving into a surplus. Along with this, the goal should be to gain about 0.25 to 0.5% of your body weight each week. If you're going over that, not a problem, just decrease your calories a little bit. If you find yourself at a standstill in your body weight, but training is still progressing very, very well, not a problem, just hold there for another three weeks or so. If you're at a standstill with body weight and training is not progressing, you can look to increase calories another 10 to 15%. A great rule of thumb here is to weight adjustments to calories up out at least three weeks 
to keep things pretty tight and ensure that you're not putting on unnecessary fat gain. When it comes to the macro breakdown and where you should be adding calories in when you look to increase your surplus, it is not a bad idea to increase your calories mainly from carbohydrate. Not only do they go a super long way to help provide you with energy for your training, but also fuel great pumps and serve quite the purpose for growth itself. Now, why is that the case? Well, when carbs are consumed, carbs break down into glucose and are stored as glycogen both in the muscle and the liver. During your training, your body taps into those glycogen stores to produce the energy for the training. Also something to note, when your body is fueled in carbohydrates sufficiently, it is less likely to break down muscle protein and muscle tissue for energy. Meaning more of the protein that you consume can be used for muscle tissue growth and repair rather than energy production. When it comes to dietary fat in your diet in a calorie surplus, dietary fat should make up at least 0.5 times your body weight in grams per day. Now, if higher carb intake leads to maybe more bloating or satiation, first and foremost, you wanna take a look at if you're consuming too much fiber. This can typically be the case for an individual that's pushing calories up into a surplus. The right amount of fiber can help you move bowels very well. Too much fiber can actually do the exact opposite. So 10 to 14 grams of fiber per 1,000 calories consumed is a good place to live. I bring that up though, because if carbs are taken to a place to where eating more doesn't really sound that appetizing, increasing dietary fats or even healthy fat sources is not a bad thing to do. Fats are by nature more dense per gram calorically, meaning that they're nine calories per gram rather than four calories per gram in comparison to protein and carbs. Four to 500 calories worth of white rice goes down a little bit differently than four to 500 calories worth of olive oil. Obviously the volume of food of white rice is much higher in that context in comparison to olive oil. So use fat as a tool in your calorie surplus to reduce food volume to keep the surplus more sustainable. When it comes to protein, this can stay pretty consistent. 0.8 to 1.2 times your body weight in grams per day is just fine. In some cases, we have athletes go over that 1.2 times their body weight mark in protein per day simply because they enjoy it and there's no other added benefit besides just keeping their intake higher. The thing that you had to be mindful of is how well you digest protein. For some individuals that take protein really high, that actually slows down digestion quite a bit, which can impact mood, impact sleep, impact how well you feel through your training and just throughout the day in general. And the same thing goes for higher carbs. We have some athletes that take higher carb intake really, really well. We have other athletes that are a little bit more sensitive to gluten itself, which makes a big difference. We have some that do better on higher fat. You really have to work with yourself and try out different percentage breakdowns of macronutrients to find what works best for you and is most sustainable overall. From a training standpoint, obviously we need to continue to create the demand for the calorie surplus to put the extra calories that we are consuming to good use. To simply break down Rainer's training, we only chose about two to three exercises per target muscle to perform on a given training day. We would start his training block that's about four to six weeks in length with just two sets per exercise to allow him to get acclimated to the exercises themselves. Choose an appropriate load, see what rep range he's gonna land in that feels good and pushes his intensity close enough to failure to demand growth. And over the course of that training block, over four to six weeks, we would see his sets increase from three to four to maybe five in some exercises. For each working set and exercise, he would also be assigned a rep range like 10 to 15. Given that range of about five repetitions, each week he would have the opportunity to add a rep. He would go to 12, he would go to 13, he would go to 14, he would go to 15. Let's say in the third week of his training block, he had three sets of 10 to 15. If he hit all 15 reps for all three of those sets, that would allow him to go up in load the next week and restart that rep progression. Designing his program this way integrated progressive overload right into the program and made that aspect of training super simple. Rather than adding this pressure to add a shit ton of load every single week, which is a little bit more difficult to do the more experience that you have in the gym. Progressing through these rep ranges and adding volume week over week is what kept his progress both steady and predictable. 
when training got pretty fatiguing and demanding because it will as you make training harder and harder over time you will reach a point to where you peak and adding any more actually leads to diminishing returns and reductions in strength and reductions in performance typically we notice this in athletes when their mood is off their appetite starts to feel off, digestion can even feel a little bit off, sleep can, training logs start actually digressing rather than progressing. This is the perfect time to go ahead and back off training volume, back down to maintenance, no more than eight to 12 work sets per target muscle, reduce training intensity and get it pretty far away from failure itself for a whole week. What this does is secure the growth, secure the adaptations you just created over the course of the previous training block, and most importantly, gets you recovered and ready to go into the next training block even stronger. In order to grow and develop tissue, you must give your tissue time to recover. In Rainer's case, about every five to six weeks, he would back off and perform what is called a deload week. The thing is, progressive overload just doesn't happen forever. At some point, again, you reach that peak of what you can recover from, and you must back off, recover, reset, and rebegin that process moving forward, which leads us to our next point. In order to keep the progress of the gaining phase going, while again, staying lean, not losing your lines, and not gaining too much body fat, you must learn how to pull back to potentiate more gains long-term. This means when the gaining phase grows tiresome, exhausting, you start feeling lethargic, you start disliking the idea of food, which is normal, it will come. You'll likely start to feel pretty beat up from training, you'll hold some water and inflammation in your face, digestion and bloating might be a little bit off. You might see yourself carrying a little bit more fat around the waist. Pants get a little bit harder to button up. Those are all signs that it's time to back off the bulk. About every four to six months, we would take Rainer out of his surplus and into an aggressive calorie deficit for six to eight weeks. Sounds maybe counterintuitive to growth, but this is actually what allowed him to gain more muscle long-term while again, staying lean. All right, so what I'm showing you guys here is Rainer's progress in our program since he started it. And as you can see, we're about 171 pounds when he started the program around December, January of 2021. Over the course of the first six to eight months, we brought his body weight up to about 186, 187, 188 peak body weight. And it was right around this time where he was starting to give us the biofeedback of, hey, like I'm pretty tired of eating, I'm not that hungry anymore, training motivation's kind of dipping. And typically when people hit this stage of burnout, you see them just kind of back off tracking. They're like, oh, I'm just gonna go to maintenance, I'm just gonna eat whatever. Some people even get themselves to the point where it's like, hey, I'm gonna try to even add more calories. Like, I don't wanna get out of this gaining phase, so I'm gonna revert to more junk food to help me get my calories up because it's, you know, less voluminous. And, you know, this is where people can really take body fat too high if they're not careful. But right when we start to see those signs from Rainer, instead of burning out, instead of pushing through that, that is exactly where we dropped him into the six to eight week deficit, which as you can see, got him down from 186, 187 pounds down to 174, which is only four pounds heavier than his body weight when he just started with the program. Although, as you can see from these photos, that 175 looks a hell of a lot different than his starting 175 due to the amount of tissue we actually accumulated over the first six to eight months inside of the program. So as you can see here, Starting off about 3,200 calories, that was our first calorie increase, was up to 34, or th sorry, 3,200 calories, a 400 calorie increase to kind of get him going into the surplus. And he started putting down his first couple pounds. This is what he looked like at about 174 pounds at that time in January. As we got closer towards the summer, around July, you can actually see that his food was up to about 4,250. So um, progressively over time, we just added more calories over the course of the first six to eight months inside the program. And as you can see, this is where he started getting to 185 pounds, clearly bigger in size, more muscularity, more fullness, but still, as you can see, vascularity, ab definition, which is super important and key to keep on you during a gaining phase, but that's what, keep, that's what keeps you motivated to keep sustaining the gaining phase. When you're starting to lose lines and lose vascularity, it, 
oh, man, that makes you really want to die. It's like, I miss that, right? So it's very crucial to keep that around as much as possible. And again, use the same formula to adding calories in the surplus that I gave you previously in this video to keep things tight throughout and ensure that training demand is what's cueing you to add in more calories rather than just throwing yourself in too large of a surplus and trying to stack your body weight as high as possible. Right around September is again when we decided to actually pull him into the deficit. So we see his calories reduced quite a bit here down to 3000 from that 4250 mark. But as you can see, he's already down about 10 pounds in body weight. Um, as we go into October, as you can see, we already start bringing his calories back up to 3400 now that he's gotten down to this 175 body weight. This transformation that I'm showing you on screen here was the peak of Rainer's gaining at 4250 calories. And now this photo on the right hand side is him at the end of his mini cut at 175 pounds at 3,000 calories. So losing 10 pounds, losing almost 15 pounds at 3,000 calories is pretty goddamn cool, but that's what can be accomplished when you build more muscle tissue because the more muscle tissue you have, the more efficient you become at actually losing fat. So yes, this happened over just a six to eight week period. During this time and during this phase, it could be actually a really good idea to pull your training volume into maintenance. Like I said earlier in the video, no more than really eight to 12 work sets per target muscle, because this allows your body to recover a little bit more in the grand scheme of your training as it gives your body a little bit of a break. And during this period, along with the deficit, you'll maybe experience hunger cues come back. The desire to gain more tissue really comes back. Again, you're, getting, you're seeing yourself get leaner, which increases motivation quite a bit. And even from a training standpoint, you'll get to the point after six to eight weeks where it's like, okay, I miss higher volumes. I miss pushing it harder a little bit. This is not just, a mini cut is not just done for the physiological benefit. A lot of this is also done for the psychological benefit of the athlete to keep pursuing the gaining phase. Because as you can see here, he's starting to gain body weight again climb up to about 179 pounds here by the end of October on 3,700 calories. So it's really cool to see an athlete start to acclimate in body weight and start seeing more progress and start seeing more gains while eating about 500 to 600 less calories than they were previously at the peak of their previous surplus. And what this did was by Rainer, as you can see here, October to May, what this did was buy him six to seven more months of gaining, where he actually took his peak body weight up about six pounds higher than he did previously. And at this point here, we actually got him into a little bit of a longer cut that lasted from May about down to October. So about five months to get him down to a similar body weight. But again, if you see himself, if you see him at 174 in comparison to the previous 174, in comparison to the starting 174, he's clearly accumulated a lot more tissue over this course of time. That is the game, my friends, of consistently improving. It means gaining more muscle tissue and putting yourself in a position to where you can gain more tissue while staying lean. Again, I'm really gonna reiterate this. Many people, or most people, will make the mistake of pushing themselves into a surplus for a longer amount of time for no reason. And by doing that, it typically leads to a little bit more lenience with food, things getting a little bit sloppy, wanting to fill up your calorie surplus with junk calories because the idea of eating healthier foods in a surplus just really turns you off. And it just leads you to a point of complete burnout, which is when, again, people just back off completely, toss themselves into a deficit for the next three to six months. And that just puts the amount of tissue that they can gain and the improvements that they can create in their physique just on pause for that amount of time that's spent in the calorie deficit. Instead, when you learn to pull things back about every four to six months, any calorie surplus, it only leads to a brief six to eight week pause that gets you right back into the gaining phase, ready to sustain it for longer. And because of the nature of that deficit being so short, you can't expect any tissue loss, even though it is more aggressive of a cut than a longer cut. The more tissue that you gain and accumulate is what buys you the efficiency to lose as much fat as Rainer has 
in those short six to eight week periods. And I will always, always, always take the person that runs this model over the course of 24 months to gain more muscle than the person who bulks super hard for three months at a time, diets super hard for three months at a time, and ends up just losing and gaining the same amount of weight just to look the same every single year. One person plays a longer game and makes much more progress long term, while again, the other just looks the same year over year and loses and gains the same amount of weight. Or even worse, tries to hang out in the middle and main gain only to make little to no progress at all and be stuck in a perpetual plateau, just like Rainer was before he started our program. So my question for you is, who do you want to be? If you're looking to start a muscle gain journey of your own, just like Rainer's, you are going to first need a training program to help you get started with that. Head to the link in the description to grab either a four or a five day program that's best suited for your needs and schedule and go ahead and get yourself started on this journey. If you need more guidance on how to find your maintenance calories or where you need to start before you go into a calorie surplus, make sure you head to our channel and watch this video on how to find your exact calories to get you started. Make sure you drop a like on this video if you want to see more of this content and comment down below if you have any questions. We'll see you in the next one.